When you start up painting landscapes, you'll often do hundreds of small sketches to practice. But there comes a point where you want to do a larger and more refined version. There are a few methods and processes to achieve this. My favourite at the moment was commonly used in the 19th century. One such example is Ivan Shishkin. He's a Russian landscape painter. And his works are typically very detailed and show an interesting play of light. His method of arriving to his final painting is as follows. He would produce a sketch of the landscape from life. This was usually done in pencil and the objective of the drawing was to find the composition. From this sketch, he would work out the colour harmony that he wanted. This was likely done from life, but I imagine he also worked on them in the studio. The painting's basically planned out now. He has all the information he needs. He has the colour and he has the drawing. All he needs to do is just apply that onto the larger painting. To start this, what he would do is he would draw a grid onto the drawing. Then he would draw the same grid onto the larger canvas and use this to assist in enlarging it onto the canvas. Then he would mix the colours that he used in the colour study and apply them in the same place on the larger canvas. Something to note about this particular painting is that it's not completely credited to Ivan Shishkin. It is known that the artist Konstantin Savinsky also worked on the painting. In particular, the bears were painted by him. However, the landscape aspect of the painting is attributed to Shishkin and has, over time, been mistakenly attributed to him alone. Anyway, what's interesting about Shishkin is that he was a big fan of photography. He advised many to use it to assist in their work. Now the key word here is assist. He told his students that the way the artist uses a photo will reveal if they have talent. Because a mediocre artist will slavishly copy all the unnecessary detail from a photo. But a man with a flair will take only what he needs. Shishkin used photos a lot, especially in the winter when the weather makes it really impractical to paint from life. But it's important to remember that it all starts from life. He rarely ever painted purely from photo. I have painted many paintings using this method, and some resemble Shishkin's subject matter. But you're not always in a location that resembles a beautiful forest. The world is large and filled with different landscapes. This process is not limited to only one. I'm in Key West and I found a view I like looking over this channel. I really want to explore this scene on a larger canvas, but like Shishkin, I'm going to do a sketch of it first. When I first started out painting, doing preliminary sketches really annoyed me. I was excited and wanted an immediate finished result. But over time, I have come to really appreciate a study of my subject. It serves as a great way to play with ideas and practice how you want to approach the larger version. My goal in this sketch is to gather enough information to be able to use it as a reference for the larger work. This is what I need to find. A composition, a colour harmony, and a fairly solid drawing. What I mean by drawing is the accuracy of my painting to the subject matter. Not specifically pencil or charcoal, but instead what it means conceptually. To begin, what I'll often do is a quick compositional drawing beforehand to work it all out. But in this case, I'm really confident in what I'm going to do, so I dive right in applying paint. I'm attacking the canvas in big masses. What is the general colour of each area, then comparing that to reality. Colour harmony can be difficult. What I usually do is think about what I want to convey. In this painting, I want to capture a tropical vibe, so I'm going to look for places that I can achieve that. I'm going to saturate colours in the water and have those blue and yellow colours play off each other. In this sketch, I don't need to be afraid. I can try anything. I can place down any colour because this isn't the finished painting. This is a step for me to learn how I want to execute the larger work, 
so I might as well try things out. Another thing I like to think about is the overall colour of the painting. I step back and look at the work to see if the colours flow into each other. Sometimes I even picture it like a photo filter, a way of grouping colours so that the final painting is harmonised. This is the final sketch. You can see that it has all the information that I wanted. I have the composition, a colour harmony that I'm happy with, and a drawing that is fairly solid. You can imagine if I had painted this much looser and more impressionistic, I would be missing specific details. It would still serve as a useful study, but in this case I wanted more drawing to work from. This here is my larger canvas, and now we've painted our sketch, we can begin enlarging. A lot of people would take this larger canvas and bring it to the same location to where they painted their study and paint it there. But over time, I found that this doesn't work as well for me. I found that if I paint the larger work purely from life, I don't make as many design choices and begin to lose my vision of the painting. And this makes sense. When you paint from location, you are fighting an intense battle. The weather does not conform to you. Light changes and you may find yourself chasing fleeting effects. From the studio, you can relax and think clearly about what is best for the painting. You've painted a sketch on location and have experienced this battle. Now it's time to organize that battle and decide exactly what you want. You'll remember that Shishkin used a grid to enlarge his sketch onto the canvas. I, however, am not gonna do this because I'm gonna change and alter the drawing. I'm using this opportunity to make any changes that I want. I can look at my sketch and decide what I don't like and paint accordingly. I want to look for rhythms in the painting and translate that onto the canvas. I really like this swooping motion in the water, so I'll place that onto my canvas with some diluted paint. This part of the process is really important. I'm placing down the building blocks to the finished painting. You want to think big. How much space does the sky occupy? Where is the tree placed? And at what angle is it? You can see here that I've merged these two areas. On a compositional level, they are the same shape. Focus on getting this right and you'll be grateful later on. I've transferred the drawing of the sketch onto the canvas. Now it's time to start applying paint. I'm using my sketch as reference for my colours. I need to apply what I've done there and place it onto the larger canvas. I'm going to attack this in a very similar way to the sketch. Large masses of colour first. You'll see that fairly quickly I've covered my canvas. I've painted this before, only smaller, so I have no doubts in what I'm doing. The more planning you do, the smoother this process will go. I'm not concerned about going over my underdrawing. It is more of a guide, and by allowing the areas of paint to mix with each other, it allows me to play with edges. I painted over the tree, but this is actually to my benefit, because in terms of depth, the tree sits closer to us than the sky. Later, I'll place the tree back in, and because the layer of paint will sit over the sky layer, it will sell the depth even more. This is why I often paint from background to foreground, because the natural layering of the paint will give you added depth. The illusion of three dimensions in a painting is what makes it magic. You're turning a flat surface into a window into another place and time. In this painting, I really want to capture how the ocean recedes into the distance. To tackle this problem, I picture a grid. It slowly tilts away from me and falls over completely. The far lines appear much smaller than the foreground ones. This is perspective. When I look at my painting, I envision the ocean as this grid. I feel how it takes us into the background. To capture this, the closer we get to the horizon, the smaller the brush marks I will use. Throughout this process, I'm painting mainly from my sketch. Every now and then I use a photo to fill my mind with some more subtle details or drawing. If I had painted this purely from the photo, my painting would likely end up more rigid. It would be missing that vibrancy and life you get from painting plain air. This is the final enlarged painting. Something to note is that you can see that the foreground rocks changed quite a bit. During the process, this one rock kept bugging me. Its position was awkward, it was too predictable and repeated a similar distance between shapes. 
I swapped it out for some more subtle rocks lower down. This is a great example of how you can plan a composition out as well as you think, but when it comes down to it, it just doesn't work how you intended. You have to be open to these changes and understand when they happen. Here is a quick summary of what I did in this video. One, I painted a sketch from life with objectives of finding composition and colour harmony that I liked. Two, I then drew this onto my larger canvas, making any changes that I wanted. Three, I started applying paint. I drew my colours directly from my sketch. And four, I detailed the painting using my sketch and photo as a reference. I'd really recommend trying a similar process if you haven't already. It's a really fun challenge, but also very freeing. It's always interesting what you can learn from the past. I didn't do exactly what Shishkin did. It's not exactly the same process and definitely not the same result. I think it's important to understand what was done historically, but then make it your own. What works with you is what's most important. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you next time. I think that's pretty much it, right? Final bum bum bum. Yay.